All right, hello everyone. Welcome to the weekly Tower Light video slash audio podcast. Uh, we have Jesse back this week. Always good news hello. on that front. Uh, Jesse, oh, well, actually, yeah, you were gone last week, weren't you? Yes. I was. Uh, the, uh, Delaware with Jarvis Street back, though, their, their guard who was suspended for a few games when we beat them. Uh, yeah, he, he's talented, all three of them. They have just a whole lineup. Baptiste down low. Uh, I think Delaware would pull that out. Probably if, uh, but anywhere from like 10 to 4 point, 3 point game. Yeah. That's a tough one. I, Drexel's my sleeper. I could see Drexel, e like, not easily winning, but I could easily see Drexel winning this game. Uh, they. They play, I don't want to say similar way the uh, Delaware does, because Delaware's got I more just inside. That's embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> I promise you're not boring me, Matt. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, but uh, no, they, they, <laughs> Delaware plays down low a little bit more than Drexel does. But Drexel's guards, they match up with Delaware's guards. I'd say Delaware has more high powered offense, but I, I have to give the edge to Delaware. But I can see Drexel pulling this one out. But no, I go Delaware like. 81-77. Yeah, Massinet and Faust do match up well against Usher and... Uh, mm -hmm. Usher and... Sadler. Sadler, Sadler Usher, yeah. Usher and Sadler, Sadler from that's uh, Delaware. Yeah, sorry about that. Do you want to add anything to that game? Or? Uh, I think... I mean, I just think that... Um, I think Delaware would win. Um, if it, if Towson doesn't win, I obviously think that it will be Delaware that ends up winning the whole thing, so... All right, and that brings us to the five o'clock game Sunday, which Ooh. would be as we pr as we are predicting William Mary and Towson. Uh, this one's tough for me. It's hard to beat a team three times. It is, it's and it doesn't hard. matter what sport it is. Yeah, it's hard to beat a team three. Okay, I guess not baseball, but well, yeah. Matt and I were talking about that with uh, NFL playoffs. They always yeah. say that. If you beat a team, if you're playing somebody in your division and you've already beaten them twice, it's really hard to beat them a third yeah, time. Yeah, and the, I mean. William Mary matches up well against us. We won on a buzzer beater on Saturday, so uh, that would be tough. I I uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Well, that'd be really tough for. That's tough for me to pick. I mean, my my case for Towson to win is the rebounding advantage. Towson. Yeah. I mean, Jarrell is leading the entire. And I didn't know this actually until this afternoon, but Jarrell leads the whole country in rebounding. Yeah. I knew that he led in double doubles, but I didn't He's know. He's been leading the nation in, in rebounding the past like month. Oh, so. okay. Yeah. And so we have – Towson has the highest rebounding margin, which means how many more rebounds we're getting per game on the offensive and defensive side per game than our opponents. And we have the highest margin in the CAA while William & Mary has the worst. So I just think that that could be – that would be like the deciding factor in the game. A lot of times if you're talking about any basketball game, it doesn't matter if it's college or NBA, if you look at the, the rebounding margin between the two teams, the team that won is probably the team that gets the most rebounds. Yeah. So, um, one thing that I could see happening, which kind of happened with uh, the game on Saturday against William and Mary, we struggled mightily in the first half from three point range. Oh yeah, we did. And we were down by fifteen at one point, down by ten at half. We didn't go lights out from three point range to say at all in the second half, but we made a good number of them. Four and Raf made a good number of threes, yeah. and that got, that helped us get back in the game. So mm -hmm. I mean, Towson's not the best three point shooting team to begin no, with. No, they're they're somewhere in like the mid thirties, yeah. but they're improved. But I can see yeah. three-point shooting being one of those deciding factors, as long as rebounding. Mm -hmm. I could see Tal. I could literally could see either team winning. Mm -hmm. If I had to pick one, I'm gonna pick Towson. Just I know it's hard to beat a team three times, yeah, but uh, I mean, I don't. Coach Scary's a really good coach. I'm not saying the other guy's not good. Yeah. But I mean, you could also just make the case that it's a senior-laden team too. Yeah. They're hungry. They haven't been in the postseason. Jarrell yeah. has the Big East experience, so. Well, if I had to break it down, nah. which I did. Um, <laughs> well, here's just some stats here. In the CAA, Towson, William & Mary. Towson's number two, William & Mary's number three in scoring. Towson's number four, William & Mary's number seven in defense. Towson's number one, and William & Mary's number two in shooting. But the stat that stands out, the one that decides this game, well, I'll tell you. Yeah, can we have a, can we have a drum roll? Um, Towson, number one in field goal defense. William & Mary, nine. Okay, so there it is, folks. At if the you're, bottom. Yeah. If you're looking for the standout statistic, it's right here. Field goal defense, okay? Towson's going to step up their defense, and Towson's going to shoot well, hopefully. And I think the third game will actually be easier for them to win than the second one. The second one, I felt like that was when William & Mary was like, we really want to win this one, get that confidence going. That was when we only won by three, right? Yeah, two. Burwell. Two. Yeah, Burwell okay. shot. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think this one... 
it'll be close, but I think Towson will eventually pull away by like eight or ten. I think At, with free throws. Well, <laughs> or do you think they're gonna pull I, away with free throws at the end, like they're fouling because they want us to miss free throws, or yeah, are we gonna be up and then William Mary hit some shots when it doesn't I, matter? I think somewhere in the first half we're gonna go up twelve. We're gonna get this confidence, and they're gonna make their little push. They're gonna get to four, and then Towson's gonna be like, no. We don't want it to get any closer. Bump it back up to 10. And then we're going to miss a couple free throws, which will make it an eight-point game. 74-66, Towson. That's it. Matt has a lot of energy coming out of the snow day. I just had yeah. a Mountain Dew. I had a Mountain Dew. I can't help it. <laughs> Matt got more sleep than me. Well, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, roommates. <laughs> All right, so that brings us to the championship game on Monday at 7 o'clock, which will be on NBC Sports Network. The semifinal games are going to be on NBC yeah. Sports Network, too. So second round on Comcast Sportsnet, and then Sunday and Monday games are on NBC Sports Network. Mm -hmm. So that brings us Delaware and Towson again. <sighs> yeah. Oh, man. <sighs> this is a real – I mean, when I was looking at the statistical comparisons, uh, Towson and New Dell are about even in scoring offense. Um, Towson is better than them in scoring defense, but then we're even again almost in field goal percentage, three-point percentage – but the thing that worries me is that Towson's turnover margin is a lot worse than Delaware's. That means that yes. we're giving up the ball a lot more than we are forcing turnovers. Uh, so that's obviously never a good sign to victory, especially when you're trying to play with the lead and you're giving them the fast break off of a steal, or even if you're just having unforced errors uh, in the offensive zone and you're throwing passes out of bounds or whatever it may be. Well, if you're asking me, no. Um, <laughs> We are it, asking you. Yeah. <laughs> this is a tough one. Drexel's, I mean, not Drexel, Delaware's offense is very high-powered. Not as much as us. Like, our guard play is pretty strong. We have Burwell, we have Guthrie. But they have three guards that can compete on any team in D1 almost. And, yeah. and they're going to come at us. They're going to come at us hard. And it's going to be our defense that will really have to stay strong if we want to make this a game and hopefully pull it out. If I had to pick a deciding factor... It, I mean, it's been our deciding factor all season, and especially in the last 10 games. It seems like when we're close in the second half, someone has the ball in their hands, and someone takes it to the rim, draws fouls, hits free throws, sometimes hits three-pointers. Raph? Uh, no, his name his name is Jarrell Benjamin. And, um, or Raph. Well, yeah, he, he, he's strong too, but... I, Jarrell just has this ability to, I don't want to say take over a game, but he, no, well, he kind of literally takes over a game, <laughs> yeah. which, I mean. Well, they, what they do for him, they run a lot of isolations at the yeah. top for either him or Raph, and then they drive and then hope they get fouled, and it's not pretty to watch, sorry no, guys, it's no. not going to be pretty to watch if that's what they end up doing, but I, it, I, wor it worked for them more times than not this season. I just think that Delaware's got some strong players, Baptiste and uh, Sadler and the other two guards that I forgot their names. Usher um, and three. Yeah, yeah, those two. Um, they have some strong players, but they don't have Benjamin. Benjamin's one of the best mid-major players in the entire country. And when you have a player like that, especially in tournaments like the NCAA tournament, it's always that one like really, really strong player that seems to stand out and lead his team. So I'm looking for Benjamin to do that, and I'm really hoping he does because I can say that because I'm not covering the team. Um, but, yeah, <laughs> I really hope he... Hope he comes out strong and takes over the game. But I'm going with Towson. I am. So you're saying Towson will be in the NCAA tournament? Oh, gosh, I can't believe I'm saying it. How about that? Towson's going to be in the NCAA tournament. Well, I'm saying it. Uh, Matt is predicting that they will be. Yeah, 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 it's true. But I just get excited predicting it. Also, just had a mountain. That would be so. crazy. It, yeah, I mean, it'd uh, be huge for the school. I could see either team winning. I, so I could too. I, I, mean, be, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised either way. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, don't could... want to sound like I'm covering the team and. Yeah, I know sometimes we all have classes and everything, go to camp, go to school together, but then just, like, watching two games this past this year, one in person, one on TV, just covering the team the whole year, I wouldn't be surprised if Delaware won just with three back because mm -hmm. they didn't have them when we beat them earlier yeah. this year at home. But uh, I think either way it's going to be a five-point game. Yeah, and I, close. I think that even uh, William & Mary, I think, even has a chance to win the whole thing, honestly. Oh, if they can, it, no, oh if, I mean, if they can beat Towson – I think that there's – I didn't really see anything looking at the comparisons that says, like, oh, they definitely wouldn't be able to beat Delaware. So yeah. I think if William & Mary can get back past Towson, I think it would be very interesting to see them in a conference championship game against Delaware. I think 
Delaware, William Mary, and Towson all have an equal shot at 28% to win it. <laughs> yeah, we, we did the math before this. And then uh, Drexel with a 16% chance to win CA. Yeah. Sorry yeah. to Hofstra, UNCW, College of Charleston, Northeastern, <laughs> James Madison. You guys have no shot. You didn't make Jesse's year. cut. You just didn't. <laughs> I mean, I think that it would. I think it, the Drexel, Del- the potential Drexel and Delaware matchup is really interesting. Mm-hmm. Can we talk about how fortunate Towson was to not have to go against Northeastern? Yeah, beat them once yeah. the past three years. Yeah, if they were the number seven seed, mm-hmm. that would have been a horrible matchup. Yeah, I mean that that'll help us going into William and Mary's game. If, assuming we beat James Madison, if we don't, then well, this is just all for naught. But <laughs> no, we 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 should beat James Madison, and it'll help us because we're not going to be tired and tested from a game like Northeastern. So that's a good good draw for us that we got James Madison. The thing about Jarrell, what you said in the CAA, potential CA championship game, he's been playing 40 minutes nonstop. So if he's playing 120 minutes Boy. with no break, for three, 40 minutes for three straight days, that's tiring. It's tiring. Not to bash him. I love the guy. Yeah. I know him personally. But – for anyone, 120 minutes in three straight days, that's that's just tiring. Yeah. Jarrell, yeah. if you're out there watching, avoid the green turtle this weekend. Just sleep. <laughs> avoid the green just go to bed. Just go to bed after the game, please. Run some laughs. Get ready. <laughs> uh, you know, condition yourself for this because we need you. <laughs> All right. Is there anything else you guys want to say about the tournament before we move on to pro stuff? Um, Baltimore Raider this weekend. It's if gonna be ha- fun. If you haven't seen it, go pick it up. It's somewhere in here. Yeah. We're sifting through the pages. There's our, there it is. There it is. You might want to lift it up a little there bit. There it is. <laughs> yep. There you go. So, right here. Read that. That's my preview of this weekend. It doesn't give, like, game-by-game game scenarios, like kind of what we just covered. Yeah. But it gives you everything you'll need to know. All right. Well, moving on from college to pros and switching sports entirely, <laughs> um, we're going to talk a little bit about the Ravens. Um, obviously, there's not really a whole lot going on in the pro sports world right now besides the NBA but there is always NFL free agency stuff to talk about. There's hockey. It's spring training yeah, baseball. Just because just the Capitals are The doing Caps so have been hot. so disappointing this year that I have even had. I've yeah. hardly followed the NHL. Yeah. Now, the Wizards, on the other hand, I can't believe they lost. Yeah, uh, last night they got crushed. I told you they were going to lose to Memphis. Yeah, I, anyways, this is going to happen. After we heard that Martel Webster was out, I kind of yeah. pushed that game aside. I still watched it, though, but it was kind of ugly. Um, so, we obviously, most people out there listening that are in the Towson area want to hear about Ravens. So that's what we're going to cover. I could sit here and talk about the Browns, <laughs> who applied the transition tag to Alex Mack. What a transition tag is, I have no idea, but... I don't either. Really? Because that was one of my free agents who the Ravens should go after. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> no uh, the transition tag, I was joking about not knowing what it is. I did look it up. It's essentially um, that the Browns get the right of first refusal. So if the Ravens were to go to Alex Mack and say that they wanted to give him $5 million a year for four years, then the Browns would be like, whoa, whoa, whoa hold on, we'll give you $6 million. And then he'll be like, oh, okay. So it's essentially kind of like a franchise tag, but, I mean, it essentially just gives so the Browns... So he's a restricted free agent. Yeah, yeah. that's essentially what it is. Um, and he was unrestricted at the time, so it at least gives the Browns a little more leeway to retain him, but that also makes T.J. Ward's stance for the team a little bit shaky. Uh, but I'm not going to waste you guys' time. Well, there, there's your Browns corner with uh, John Munchall. <laughs> I'm Nothing's gonna... good. <laughs> that nothing, nothing is good over here. Please get out. If you're in the corner now, please leave. <laughs> I'm actually a full-time Lions fan now. Oh, man. <laughs> if Except so when cold. the Browns beat the Lions this year, too. Yeah. <laughs> man. The if first week you were a Lions fan, I the Browns beat them. It was an up-and-down season <laughs> for Munch and his down. teams. Oh, dear. I actually wrote about the Colts, too, for E-Draft, which Matt is a part of now. Yeah. Um, so, oh. yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank yes. you. I'm writing about the Texans in case anyone wants oh, to hear see? about it. So, so I, I uh, got to write about the about Colts. Yeah. <laughs> no. I got to write about the Colts last night, and... Trent Richardson came back into my mind, so oh, uh, God. I've been very Browns oh, heavy the past twelve oh, hours. Oh no! <laughs> so, anyways, yes. we got we got to stop his Ben session. <laughs> yes. So, actually, sticking on the Ravens, um, I know I'm not a big I'm not a big Ravens fan, but since I huh. live in Baltimore, to say the least, <laughs> <laughs> since I live in Baltimore, I do know at least enough about the team to get by. Um, so, I think some of the moves that they need to make before free agency. Um, first of all, I think that they need to let Jacoby Jones go. Um, he's an unrestricted free agent. You're bugging. I mean, I haven't seen... He's bugging. I haven't seen how much money he's asking for yet. Um, But I'm assuming it's going to be enough that the Ravens will want to look in the draft for a wide receiver and move Torrey Smith into that Jacoby Jones role. Because previously... As in, like, returns? Well, I don't... Not returns. I mean, I understand that Jacoby Jones is a good returner, but I'm speaking in terms of pure receiving. Obviously, but I don't know how much you want to pay just for a returner. Well, Jacoby Jones... 
down the stretch of the season was our actual best receiver. I know, and he single handedly won that Vikings game. Yes, he did. Yeah, he did do that. And then Marlon Brown's touchdown. Yes, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I, But, oh, yeah, they, they got to. Well, I also just got a Jacoby Jones jersey for Christmas. <laughs> so. <laughs> come on, Ozzie Newsome. Don't well, make him feel bad about the jersey he just got. I got, got. my Jay Jones jersey. Oh. And then they're going to let Jay Jones go. So, oh, okay. Well, maybe we'll get like a Joshua or, or like a Jordan Jones or something. I just think that. I'll, I'll just walk on. Yeah. I don't I'll have to change on. numbers or anything. I'll just wear the jersey. <laughs> I mean, I understand, like, from a fan's perspective, I could see how it would be tough to let Jones go because he's a very explosive player. But I just think, I just don't know how much he's going to ask for. And I, I looked and I haven't seen, has he set a specific figure yet? Well, I saw four to five. Yeah, four, four is kind of, it's what he's making now, isn't he? I think he's making four in his contract now. The Ravens kind of want somewhere around the two range, two million, because they don't value him as much as a receiver, even though he's, I mean, for he's the best returner right now in football, so he's going to make the argument, hey, I'm valuable on special teams. The Ravens are going to make the argument, you're not very valuable on offense. Even so, though if they just look at the film, yeah, he, yeah he, he's... Torrey he, Smith was big play. Marlon Brown was touchdown, but Jacoby Jones was that one through, yeah. through the 20s and 30s. I think he's valuable. I don't know how much we're willing to pay on him, because I do think there are other wide receivers who... Would be better wide receivers, but then you'd have to find a kick returner who's as strong as him, and you can't. Yeah, Deontay Thompson. I like the guy, but he's didn't not. he just get arrested? I or mean, something? did he? Yeah, I'm pretty sure he did. I'm sorry, Except for <laughs> God, drugs or something. I don't know. Oh, I think Sam heard. Another conversation to have too is how important is a kick returner in today's NFL? Because slowly but surely, they're making, especially kickoffs less important because of the rule changes. Well, to counter that, the year we won the Super Bowl, just a mere season, or I guess two seasons ago now. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know if you recall that. Uh, yeah, yeah, we did. <laughs> I may or may not. That game that we won at Pittsburgh, the only touchdown we had was Jacoby Jones' kickoff, or yeah. punt return for a touchdown. Mm-hmm. He runs roll fast. Roll. Yeah, I just, I don't know. I, it came off the top. Real. Yeah. Uh, the Cowboys game, he had a kickoff return for a touchdown. Super Bowl... That was huge. We only won by a few. Yeah, oh, that so. was exciting. That was. Thanks, Roger Goodell, for ruining that game. <laughs> yeah. Yep. But no, he's he's valuable. I don't know what we're gonna do with the wide receivers, but just think about Jacoby. He can dance too. So I mean, he's he's a man of many talents. <laughs> free agent, free agent wise, I don't think they they should go after any wide receivers. No, I think that they should definitely draft a receiver. Oh, but Mike no Evans, one, yeah. Mike Evans, or Marquise Lee, one of those. I wouldn't be as upset if you don't bring Jacoby Jones back as you do some. The free agent wide receivers don't really excite me that much. Um, I think, like, a lot of people are going to go after Eric Decker, but I just don't, like... I like him, but he disappears in big games. And he also has the Peyton Manning factor. Well, I don't know man. how many touchdowns he catches if Brock Osweiler is their quarterback. Brock Osweiler. <laughs> and yeah. I think that that's what most people look at with Decker is they look at his touchdown numbers the past two seasons. So I'd be a little bit wary of that. And as we were talking before, there's Hakeem next injury history... Um, Kenny Britt is mm-hmm. locked up with Akon somewhere. <laughs> locked up with Akon. Locked up. They won't let me <laughs> out. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, we're done with that. <laughs> so, <laughs> the only... F- uh, yeah, I think they got to bring Eugene Monroe back on the line. Yes, that's that's a must. He's one of... I mean, he probably is the top offensive tackle in the free agent market. So yeah, no, Don't forget Michael Orr. You know, he's great with all those false starts at home because of the crowd noise. <laughs> yep. The blind side, okay? <laughs> that's all I'm going to say. Yeah, the uh, offensive line was uh, the only other thing I commented on in my notes, um, mainly just because I think that they need to let Orr go. Or, well, I didn't See, necessarily let him go, but let him walk to another I team. I wouldn't be opposed to that, but I just don't know who better that they would get. I guess you got to look in the draft, but then I think I'd have – that's why I think they need to get – they have to have Mac. They need to have some sort of vet, veteran presence on the line because, mm-hmm. I'm sorry, Gina Kukowski, the center, is awful. Yeah. yeah. He is just – oh, Jesus. Uh, he got beat all the time. No yep. offense to him, but – They'll have Clutchio Assembly back. Uh, Icky Shipley wasn't that bad. He wasn't that bad. I, but that's just so young. I think they need yeah. a veteran presence well, somehow. Well, they, they did mention that they, they're trying to bring a center in, and we're talking about centers right now. But uh, they're, they're trying to bring a center in to compete with Geno. Just I don't know who they're going to bring in, whether they're going to draft someone or find someone with free agency. But I think they're trying to find an upgrade for Geno Gradkowski, which is great because, I mean, he, he was – Decent at times, but he he just wasn't what we need at center. Like Matt Burke yeah. was what we needed, so now we got to find someone else to fill that hole that we still have at center. The thing with Orr, he'll get beat, and 
false starts all the time, which is really annoying, but who better are they going to get? Yeah. That's the thing. There's well, no one better to get. At free agency, there's Jared Gaither and Jamal Brown. Not Jared Gaither. Jared Don't Gaither. bring him back. The Ravens, uh, he was on the Ravens for a few years. I know. From good Maryland, old, too. Good old Terp. Yeah. yeah Jared, what, what, what a waste of talent. Who's the other guy you just said? Jamal Brown. He's a Chiefs guy. Uh, yeah, no, I don't know. Can't comment on him. I no. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. I, Jamal Brown, he's he's pretty okay. I I just think that the potential replacements is all. Yeah. This actually isn't a very strong offseason for offensive linemen in, in free agency. Um, Alex Mack could help that free agency class if yeah. his price tag gets a little too high for the Browns. Um, the Packers center is also a free agent. I can't think of his name off the top of my head. He has two last names. Oh, nice. Um, huh? Yeah. It, it, he's like got like half hi, uh, hyphenated last name. Okay, so it's not like his first name is also. Oh a last no no name. no! <laughs> he's got a hyphenated last name, and I can't think of it right now. But I literally just wrote about him like a week ago. Oh. So oh. I feel bad that I can't remember it. But look him up. He's also a possibility. Um, and what else did I? Oh, and then on defense, um, I think they need to talk about Jamil McLean about restructuring his contract. Because he's going to take... Cut him. They did? Yeah, last week. Oh, so here's how much I know. They cut him They cut him and Vonta Leach. I knew about Vonta yeah. Leach. I didn't yeah, know they about... Cut McLean. I they, think they should go after Dequel Jackson. Yeah, I think so too. Sorry, Maryland, sorry for no, that. No, I mean, but, the Browns... I don't know... That's a whole other story. That's <laughs> that's also in the Browns' corner. Why would you cut Nicole Jackson? But, I mean, I understand. He's, like, the only guy the past whatever years to amass 400 tackles and yeah. hasn't made a Pro Bowl, which... Sorry that you're in Cleveland because you're not going to get any love. Yeah. But yeah, he yeah. definitely should have been a Pro Bowler. Yeah. At least one of those years. But uh, I guess since they cut, because McLean was set to take a $4 million cap hit to the Ravens. So yeah. it was good that they ended up cutting him. I didn't realize that they had done that. Um, and I also think they need to re-sign Daryl Smith because he's a... Oh, Daryl. Daryl Smith was nice. Daryl's great. Yeah, he's he set to be a free nice. agent too. So I think they, yeah. they need to bring him back, especially since they they have more cap room now with McLean yeah, gone. So. Yeah. I mean, uh, Daryl Smith was... Could have been our best defensive player last year, so uh, that I feel like that's a must. If you if you want to have the defense that we had, even though they weren't like the greatest, but they were a pretty good defense. If you want that, not until the fourth quarter. Well, yeah, you're right. But and even though they cut Vonta Leach, I think that it would probably be wise of them to bring him back. I don't know the guy we have behind him, uh, Kyle Jeswick. Is that his name? Juice, Juice from Harvard. Some Something. white guy that can play fullback, but could also go out and play the H back in like the slot. Huh. You go look at his highlight tape. He just run, okay. he just runs over people. Huh? Yeah. yeah. I didn't even know he was a person. So yeah, he yeah. responds to each backup. Oh, okay. we use him a lot on special teams. That's yeah, where he's he would him. just smack people. Hmm. But yeah. if they, can, yeah. I mean, the fullback is pretty much not really a position in the NFL anymore. Well, or, the Ravens didn't use him. Yeah, no, they didn't. use Vontaze. They were like, oh, let's run the pistol because you know. Uh, well, I don't understand Joe that Flacco either. is uh, really athletic and <laughs> <laughs> can run the. But with, well, they have the they have a new offensive coordinator now, so it'll be interesting to see what Kubiak brings. Yeah. So, anything else you guys want to add about free agent wise? I don't think there's really they got to keep some of the guys in house, but I, I don't know who else is out there that I think they should go after besides Mac mm-hmm. and Jaquan mm-hmm. Jackson. That's really it. I think it might be interesting to see if they do anything in free agency with the running back position. If Ray, if something happens with Ray Rice in terms of the law or the NFL suspending him, would you guys do you guys see them going into the season with just Bernard Pierce? Uh, no. They would draft somebody. Yeah, I don't I don't think they would do it free agency. You think they would draft somebody before free agency? A source, yeah. I'm not going to name, a source. told me that he talked to Ravens sources, and they said they're not going to go after T-West. Hmm. I don't know how, reliable, I don't know how reliable that what? is. What? I don't know how Come reliable on. that is. I heard it Saturday at the basketball <sighs> game. Uh-huh. I'm not going to drop anyone's names, because yeah. I don't know if that's on the record or not. But I'm, so, it's what I heard. I don't know how reliable it is. Hmm. That's so disappointing. Well, you don't know. You never know. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. Like, they might just be saying that. Also, on the Browns front, they did not interview Johnny Manziel at the Combine. They're dumb. I don't understand life. Good for him, though. He just cared to be He wouldn't make a Pro Bowl because all the games in Cleveland yeah. are blacked out. Oh, <laughs> Johnny. So, anything else you guys want to add? Oh, uh, that's it. All see right. you guys Saturday. Yeah, I hope to see a lot of black and gold of the game, uh, especially on Saturday. That's probably the easiest game for people to get to. Yeah. So we really hope to see everybody there on Saturday. And then if Towson was to make it to the championship game on Monday, obviously need a big showing for that. So. Yep. Yeah. I don't and know. And I know there's a uh, bar crawl on Fed Hill <coughs> on Saturday, so you can just go from the bar crawl right to the game. There you go. You wouldn't have to tailgate because you've been tailgating all day. Essentially. Yeah. So, I know you tell the students with bar crawls. Weren't a lot of you at the game Saturday when the can bar crawl was going on. <laughs> uh. All right. Well, I guess that's all we have for this week. So, appreciate you guys watching and uh, enjoy the games this weekend.